Weddings are usually thought of as fairy tale times when real life is momentarily suspended and they live happily ever after seems possible if only for a day. One is tempted to ask, then what happened? What happens when Cinderella realizes she's married a guy with a foot fetish and that glass slippers hurt like the devil? Or when the prince learns that his beloved comes as a package deal with seven dwarfs of very dysfunctional personalities? When two people have been married before, they know what happily ever after is not a guarantee, but simply something to shoot for. They know that the things that made them happy in their past may not be things that define happiness today. They are wise enough to admit that they don't know what the future may bring or what exactly they will need to make them happy down the road. They do, however, know about themselves, about real life, and about the work that staying happily married entails. They've been there. They know that the real wedding doesn't happen on the day of the formal occasion. The real wedding between them occurs in conversations held while driving in the car, sitting at the kitchen table, or texting at 3 a.m. from foreign countries. It's an ongoing conversation about hopes, promises, past hurts, dreams, rights, and concessions. It's a sharing of their stories, many parts of which they have revealed to no one else. And what is decided upon during these conversations is the making of a covenant, an invisible bond of commitment, just two people working out what they want, what they believe, what they hope for in each other. With their eyes, they ask each other if they really mean it. And they do. Having undertaken this commitment before, the partners know that marriage is not always easy, but they are willing to undertake it anyway. Willing to say, I love you, I trust you. I will be here for you when you are hurting, and when I am hurting, I will not leave. When a man and a woman get married, and it's not their first time, they were usually more concerned with the marriage than they are with the wedding. They know that companionship at the end of each day is more important than the color of the bridesmaids' dresses or the groomsmen's shirts. They know that friendship as the, is the basis for their love matters more than the size of the diamond. It is a moment in time the love is richer, deeper, wiser this time. Mary, from that first kiss almost 30 years ago, I knew you were the one that was meant to be my soulmate for life. For reasons only God knows, He took us in different directions. And then, and then He brought us back together. And I will never be the same. You are my heart. You have given me breath. You have calmed my storms. You have fought through my demons. And you will forever be the love of my life. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, all of me loves all of you. Todd Ray Murray, you are my best friend. You truly are my Prince Charming. <clears throat> you are my hero. You are my armor, my safe place. I promise to love you when we're together and when we're apart. I truly believe that God picked you for me. I promise <clears throat> to laugh with you, to cry with you, and to grow with you. 
I promise to lead you back to Jesus and me when <laughs> we're struggling to breathe. I promise to love your father and your family and to help you celebrate your love for your mother so that we'll never forget her. I cannot wait to love your boys, Christopher, Alex, and Nicholas. I promise to be your partner in crime and your partner in life. And I promise to give you to listen to all your reasons that your gun didn't work while I school you at laser tag. And I promise to give you my time. I promise to pray for you and for us every day. It's really hard to fathom how beautiful our relationship has been, but also very painful doing two lives together. You are my ride or die. Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope for a future. Today represents a new beginning, a union of two people that are not only madly in love with each other, but also with our Lord. Today I ask him for grace for all our past failures, for all of those sins that have broken our hearts and have broken other people's hearts. In Isaiah 118, the Lord says, let's settle this. Though your, sin, though your sins are like scarlet, they will be as white as snow. My intimate prayer for us today is that we are without stain, blemish, or wrinkle, but holy and blameless, as pure as the crust of butte snow. <laughs> God, I adore you. I can't wait to call you my husband. I marry you today without any, any hesitation, no doubt. I am yours. Um, my commitment to you is absolute, and I'm yours forever. I love you. Our Father, Our Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our, our daily bread, bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Take Todd on this day as your husband. Do you promise to bring to your marriage the best that you have in you, seeking to live a life with him based on respect, kindness, companionship, fidelity, and unconditional love? If so, please respond by saying, I do. I do. Now, Todd, do you take Mary on this day as your wife? Do you promise to bring to your marriage the best that you have in you? Seeking to live a life with her based on respect, kindness, companionship, fidelity, and unconditional love. If so, please respond by saying, I do. I do! <laughs> <laughs> Mary and Todd, in so much as the two of you have agreed to live together in marriage, have promised your love for each other by these vows, I now declare you to be legally wed. You make kiss. Ha, ha, ha.